Hey, greetings everybody, it's Gleekon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft, this time sans video um, of me, of yours truly. Um, it's finally, I think, fully crapped out. We might get one or more where you get to see my face down there for a second. Um, you get the pleasure of seeing this, this uh, visage, <clears throat> but not on this one. So, on our last episode we did look at the... Uh, wrapping up the first chapter in the World of Warcraft role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons setting where we talked about Winter Spring, the final region in Northern Kalimdor. And we'll continue that on the next episode. We also have been reading Cycle of Hatred, um, and it's touched on in the video we watched to set up World of Warcraft Classic, which is called Seasons of War. In that video, in addition to seeing some, some well-animated um, clips of Horde and Alliance races and classes fighting one another. They also touched on the fact that these, the, the uneasy peace after the third war is pretty much all but gone. And this book right here helps set that up. So on our last chapter, we did have Jaina discover that she had been infiltrated by the burning blade and she exercised slash killed the guy that was possessed. So stay a while and listen as we read chapter 19 of Cycle of Hatred and continue that story. Sir, uh, the orcs. They set up camp. Major Davin started ripping out tufts of his beard. Dress code be damned. How many? Shrugging Corporal Reich said. Impossible to be saying for sure, Luke, sir. Davin closed his eyes and counted to five. Take a guess. Another shrug. Look out. He'd be saying that's at least 600, sir, but hard to say for sure, sir. They be staying far enough back that they ain't violating no borders or nothing, but... At Rich's hesitation, Davin sighed and prompted him. Ah, uh, but what? Well, sir, right now they'll just be sitting there. But I don't think that'll be lasting, sir. Especially once those boats arrive. Again, Davin sighed. It seemed the sighing was all he did these days. Dozens of boats carrying orcs and trolls alike were seen heading south on the Great Sea a day ago, heading right for Northwatch. They'd arrive within a couple of hours. At that point, Davin would have a decision to make. His instructions from Chamberlain Kristoff, who had Lady Proudmore compromised by these Burning Blade people, was in charge, were to hold Northwatch no matter what. Davin had no idea how he was supposed to do that. He hadn't even wanted to be a soldier. True, he had an aptitude for violence that made him very attractive to the recruiter who came to his village as a boy, but he was also a tremendous physical coward. He managed to fake it through training, mostly by virtue of never actually being in danger. If it was just play-acting, Davin had no difficulties at all. Use his sword on a straw dummy? No problem. But real combat against a flesh-and-blood foe? Then he was hopeless. So the first time he had faced off against a person, he had thought he'd be doomed, but he had lucked out by being part of a particularly talented platoon. Davin had done little when he had faced off against the renegade dwarves who had come to his village to try to escape dwarven justice after a failed attempt to overthrow the existing government, but the rest of his platoon had done quite well, capturing or killing all the dwarves. Davin had been able to bask in the reflected glory of his comrades. Then the Burning Legion had come. It had been awful. People had died all around him. Lordaeron had been destroyed. Humans and orcs had fought side by side. The entire world had turned upside down. Davin had never understood why Lady Proudmore had chosen to ally with the orcs. They were devils, not significantly better than the demons themselves. But nobody had asked Davin his advice. The worst day had been in some forest somewhere. Davin hadn't even known where it was, only that he was there with the tattered remains of his platoon and they were trying to find a demon stronghold so some wizard or other could learn its secrets. Davin's job was simple, protect the wizard. Everyone else was seeking out the stronghold. Unfortunately, they found it. The demons didn't take kindly to the notion. As soon as they came, their eyes aflame, Davin panicked and hid behind one of the oaks. He left the wizard exposed, and while the mage tried his best to defend himself, eventually one of the demons set him afire. While Davin watched from the safety of his arboreal hiding place, the wizard he was supposed to be protecting screamed in agony and died very, very slowly. Somehow, Davin was never entirely clear why the demons overlooked him. Perhaps they didn't deem Davin to be a threat, which was certainly true. 
Either way, though, when his platoon was wiped out and the demons buggered off to wherever it was demons buggered off to, Davin ran back to base camp expecting to be exoriated for being such a coward, but willing to face the consequences as long as he wouldn't have to go out and face such a thing again. Instead, they hailed him as a hero for surviving the deadly onslaught and coming back to report what had happened. Then they promoted him. Davin was stunned. He was no hero. He was, in fact, the exact opposite. But every attempt to clear the air just resulted in his being considered unduly modest. It was maddening. Instead of being relieved of combat, he was put in charge of other troops. Shortly thereafter, the war was kind enough to end, thus sparing Davin the embarrassment of having to actually lead troops into a battle he was incapable of fighting. The Burning Legion was driven back to whatever hell they had come from, and Davin was given another promotion, this time to Major. After Admiral Proudmoore's arrival and subsequent death, Davin was put in charge of Northwatch Keep. Until recently, he had welcomed the duty. Northwatch was fairly peaceful, and while Davin's cowardice made combat an impossibility, he didn't find an administration. Assuming, of course, that nothing went wrong. Davin didn't especially like Colonel Lorena, but he really wished she were here right now instead of off with the burning blade. For one thing, she was a lot better at running a garrison of troops than he was. Unlike Davin's, Lorena's promotions had actually been based on merit. For another, if the Burning Blade could get her, not to mention Lady Proudmore, what hope did Davin have? Oriel came running in, his two big armor clanking with each step. Major Davin! Major Davin, the orcs are moving! I haven't as soon as the boat stopped! Davin sighed yet again. Oh, when did the boat stop? Did anyone tell you? Oriel blinked a few times. Oh, wait, I was supposed to do that. Uh, sorry, sir, but I got a little overexcited. Please don't court martial me. Getting up from his desk and heading up the door, Davin said, Private right now, a court martial is the least of your worries. Slowly, Davin walked down the narrow staircase that led to the ground floor of the tower at Northwatch's center. Northwatch was built on an uneven hill that sloped down to the Great Sea. The eastern border of the keep was a stone wall that had been built between two of the hillocks. The buildings that made up Northwatch were on the western side of the wall, with a beach lined with palm trees on the eastern side. As he approached the archway that led through the stone wall and onto the beach, Davin saw orcs and trolls. Many, many orcs and trolls. Their boats were all tethered to poles that had been sunk into the sand. There were dozens of them, each with a full complement of about a dozen trolls or orcs. Some wore animal skins, others wore the heads of vicious beasts as helms. All of them were armed with axes and broadswords and morning stars and maces, and other weapons that all appeared at first glance to be bigger than Davin himself. So this is it, he muttered. We're going to die. What was that, Major? One of the troops guarding the archway asked. Shaking his head quickly, Davin said, Nothing. Somehow the Major managed to force himself to keep putting one foot in front of the other. As he passed through the archway, his boots started to sink into the sand with each step. Dimly, he registered that dozens of troops had fallen into line behind him. He took a quick glance back to see that several of them were forming a skirmish line in front of the wall, and others were taking up position atop it. Davin was grateful that someone had the wherewithal to give that order, and he briefly wondered who it was. Turning back to face the new arrivals, he said, Oh, mate! He cut himself off, his voice breaking. Clearing his throat, he started again. I'm Major Davin. I'm in charge of North Watch Cape. What business do you have here? For a brief moment, Davin entertained the hope that the orcs would say they were just passing through for a brief respite and would be gone within the hour. He hoped it as fervently as he had hoped that his return from the massacre of his platoon would result in his being cashiered out, and this hope looked to have as much likelihood of becoming reality as the previous one. Sure enough, the biggest, scariest-looking one stepped forward. Davin was willing to concede that this one seemed biggest and scariest because he was the one who stepped forward. I am Burks. I speak for Thrall. War chief of the Horde and Lord of the Clans, this keep of yours violates our alliance with your people. You've got one hour to take it down and get rid of any of and all traces of your presence here. Davin sputtered. You can't be serious. There's no way we can take down the entire keep in an hour. Burke smiled. It was the type of smile that a large predator might have right before it pounced on its small defenseless prey. If you don't comply with this order, we'll attack. And you'll die. Oh, of that last part, Davin had very little doubt. All right, so Burks, who is also possessed, 
is pushing the attack. So we'll ho have to hope that someone, Thrall, Jaina, both of them can intervene before something terrible happens. All right, everyone, I appreciate you so much for listening to another episode of Lore of Warcraft as we continue to push on and push forward toward playing Warcraft World of Warcraft Classic. This episode now in the pipe, five by five.